Hello! Greetings, my super special secret internet gang. It is your boy Julian, back again for another video. I'm super excited for this one today. I'm excited to be back because I'm going to be diving into the early years, specifically the first two records of one of my favorite bands of all time. You guessed it. The classic, the underrated, the undisputed champs, Motion City Soundtrack. Let's go! Motion City Soundtrack is awesome. So, for those of you who are blissfully unaware, Motion City Soundtrack formed in 1997 by singer and guitar player Justin Pierre, as well as guitarist Josh Kane in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Prior to starting MCS, Josh Kane was in a band called Saddest Girl Story, and Justin Pierre was in a band called Slide Coaster in the mid-90s. Slide Coaster had a sound very similar to the Smashing Pumpkins and other 90s alt-rock bands of this ilk, and you can find an EP made by them on YouTube. Uh, when Motion City started, they came right out of the gates with a two-song, seven-inch single in 1999, uh, featuring the songs Promenade and Carolina. These songs were both hovering around the five to six minute mark and were more driving, fast, and guitar heavy than Justin's previous band, Slide Coaster. You can see me The single was very similar in sound to the pop punk and alternative rock bands who were popular in the late 90s, such as the Get Up Kids, or Jawbox, or The Promise Ring. The group went on to self-release two EPs in the year 2000, according to Wikipedia. Uh, the first one is titled Kids for America, and the second one is entitled Back to the Beat. These EPs are very cool, uh, very energe energetic, very good songs, and you can hear the group evolving their sound on these EPs, moving away from the erratic sound of their first 7-inch into something a bit more controlled and refined, becoming a bit poppier and more in the vein of power pop bands like The Rentals and Ultimate Fake Book. You can hear them slowly moving towards the sound that they achieved on their first full-length I Am The Movie, but you can tell that they still weren't quite there and were still figuring out who they were as a band. Uh, some great forgotten songs from this era include Sunday Warning. And Throwdown. These songs to me sound like early precursors to I Am The Movie classics, such as the sad, mellower indoor living and the driving, roxious, don't call it a comeback. This early, pre-I Am The Movie, unsigned Motion City soundtrack went through several lineup changes early on, and struggling to find gigs in their hometown of Minneapolis, they all went through the struggle of waiting to get weeks off from their jobs so that they can tour and get their music out there. Real guys, you know, grinding in the struggle out in Minneapolis. <laughs> in 2001, keyboardist Jesse Johnson and drummer Tony Thaxton joined the band, finally stabilizing the band's early lineup instability. With this lineup in place, the then Motion City soundtrack began writing their first full-length album. Uh, in February of 2002, the band recorded the album in 10 days at Red House Studios in Eudora, Kansas. The first version of the album, I should say. Fun fact, Motion City Soundtrack released the original version of I Am The Movie in the summer of 2002 in hand-packaged floppy disks, uh, with the floppy disk cut open containing the actual CD inside. The original version had a 10-song track list which did not feature the tracks Perfect Teeth, Modern Chemistry, or Autographs and Apologies. Uh, there was a song on this original version called 1000 Paper Cranes, which was omitted from the re-released version. Now, after this original 10-song version of the album was self-released by the band, and selling an estimated 3,000 copies through their website and on tour, the band received several offers from labels such as Universal, Triple Crown, uh, Drive Through, and Epitaph in late 2002. The band ended up going up with Epitaph and with this new label backing, the band returned to the studio for 12 days uh, the following year and recorded three new songs, did some touch-ups to the previously released songs as well as re-recording capital H completely. The new revamped version of I Am The Movie that probably all of us know and loved 
uh, was re-released on Epitaph Records on June 24th, 2003. And this is where shit gets real, my friends. We are called Motion City Soundtrack, and we are from Minneapolis, Minnesota, USA, and now we will attempt to rock you. Okay, I am the movie. What a record. <laughs> so, without spending too much time talking about what this record means to me and what an impact it's made on my life, I want to talk about the sound of this record and the strange placement it had in the emo and pop punk stratosphere. When Motion City Soundtrack were signed to Epitaph, they were amidst a slew of other signings to that label, including bands like Matchbook Romance, Scatter the Ashes, and From First to Last. Obviously, these bands were ushering in the new, at the time, wave of eyeliner, cry your eyes out, teenage mallcore type music. And Motion City were signed because they were a great band, but also because Epitaph Records, who were founded by Bad Religion guitarist Brett Guritz, were being criticized for straying away from their roots and becoming a little too emo. I think Motion City Soundtrack are a very interesting band because they have always straddled this line, but arguably more so on I Am The Movie than any other album they put out, besides maybe My Dinosaur Life. And that would be... I feel like they were always a little too indie for the emo and pop punk crowd, and a little too emo and pop punk for the indie crowd. You know what I'm saying? It's no secret, Justin Pierre's love for bands like Superchunk, Pavement, and Archers of Loaf, and the influences of those bands shine through on I Am The Movie, but I don't think it would be too noticeable if you didn't already know that they were influenced by this particular style of 90s indie rock. This was because the band was also drawing considerable influence from poppier 90s alternative rock outfits such as Ultimate Fake Book, The Get Up Kids, Jawbox, and The Rentals, and of course, Early Weezer. However, Motion City Soundtrack weren't the kind of Weezer meets The Get Up Kids style band that was just a shameless ripoff. They took these influences and expanded upon them, resulting in a sound that was different and unique. Boom. However, the sound that Motion City Soundtrack had on I Am The Movie resulted in something that resembled early The All-American Rejects, Fall Out Boy, Spittlefield, and other burgeoning emo and pop rock bands at the time. I always used to think of Motion City Soundtrack as Fall Out Boy's smarter, nerdier, older cousin, if you will. That being said, the original release of I Am The Movie came out before the first All-American Rejects record, uh, the classic one with, what was that, a lawnmower on the cover of it? <laughs> it also came out before Take This To Your Grave, so if anything, Motion City Soundtrack were ahead of the curve on the rising emo and pop punk wave. That was the scene that they were always most associated with, even though I don't believe that they intended to do that. This album is chock full of bangers, chock full of classic Motion City Soundtrack songs, the energy that they had on Boombox Generation, I uh, can only imagine that was a great live song for them. Modern Chemistry, Justin Pierre kind of explores uh, mental health and addiction and depression. A-OK -okay is a perfect closing track, and what an underrated track that is. Also, speaking of underrated tracks, Mary Without Sound. Holy shit, that song's incredible. That song gives me chills. It sounds like they must have been such a great live band back then. Despite it being the first record they made, and probably the most maybe immature compared to other Motion City releases. It was very mature for the style of music that they were creating and the scene in which they were involved in at the time. It's a great record and it got a, a great response at the time. People were loving it. You know, they hadn't quite hit any sort of mainstream success yet, but this album was huge for them in the underground and they started touring a ton after it came out. All in all, a perfect album, I would say. I would say it's a great album. I literally would call it a perfect record. I am the movie. It has a great spot in my heart <laughs> to this day. It probably always will. Um, and with that, we move on to their next record, Commit This to Memory. Well, if you're looking for credits, Spin Magazine named them Band of the Month. This is their latest album, Commit This to Memory. With the song Everything is Alright from Minneapolis Motion City Soundtrack. So, after 
after I Am The Movie drops, the band toured heavily alongside the likes of Rufio, May, Fall Out Boy, MXPX, Simple Plan, the All American Rejects, as well as multiple warp tours, hitting the road, the boys are hitting the road, they're fucking in the van, touring. Most notably, the band also went on tour with pop punk superstars Blink-182 in 2004, and the two bands bonded over listening to and being inspired by the same kind of bands, such as Fugazi, Dinosaur Jr., and Ned's Atomic Dustbin. As this friendship between Blink and MCS was blossoming, Motion City came to Mark Hoppus with the idea of him producing the next Motion City record, and Mark said yes. While the band was writing the album, uh, Justin Pierre was going through problems with alcoholism, and as the band was writing in Minneapolis, Justin Pierre left them for a brief period and went to Los Angeles, where he moved in with Epitaph founder Brett Guritz and started attending Alcoholics Anonymous meetings and got sober. Afterwards, the band met Justin in Los Angeles and began recording demos for Commit This to Memory. Justin has stated in interviews that half of this record was written while he was very drunk all the time and angry, and the other half was written while he was freshly sober and introspective. You can definitely hear it in the lyrics. Once you become aware of, the, of what Justin was going through while writing these songs, at least for me, it sounds like a man sort of having a tug of war with himself, facing his emotions and problems head on, and being brutally honest with it, putting it all out there for the world to hear and judge while going through some very intense life problems as well as changes. In this regard, I sort of view Commit This to Memory as Motion City Soundtrack's Pinkerton to I Am The Movie's The Blue Album, if you will. Lyrically, I Am The Movie is very emotive in its own regard, but it is a lot more metaphorical and quirky sort of type lyrics as opposed to the er open heart surgery and realism going on on Commit This To Memory. However, the Blue Album and Pinkerton analogy only really works when talking about the lyrics of these records. If we're talking about the music, the Blue Album obviously was a lot more polished and put together than Pinkerton's loose and more raw sound. Whereas for Motion City Soundtrack, I Am The Movie was a lot more loose and less polished, and Commit This to Memory was definitely the tightest and most polished and cleanest the band has ever sounded up to that point. In interviews, members of Motion City have attributed this to working with Mark Hoppus, who was very meticulous and hands-on with the recording process, encouraging the band to tighten up the screws and come out with a more polished project that is less rough around the edges like I Am The Movie. Now, let's get into the sound of this record. Justin Pierre has been quoted as saying that he strove for the record to have a sound that resembled Braid, Jawbox, Superchunk, and the Pixies. As well, interestingly enough, the album has been called definitive of the pop-punk genre. However, Joshua Kane dismissed this label, remarking, quote, I definitely wouldn't consider us a pop-punk band. Our influences are more based on 90s bands like Superchunk and Early Weezer. Going back to what I was saying about I Am The Movie, I think it is interesting how Motion City Soundtrack are definitely considered a definitive pop-punk band, yet don't consider themselves such, or aren't even influenced by the pop-punk genre, really. Commit This to Memory is definitely the most Fall Out Boy sounding Motion City soundtrack had ever been at this point in their career, but like I was saying, despite touring with Fall Out Boy and being in the same exact scene, I Am The Movie was written before Take This To Your Grave came out, Commit This to Memory was written before From Under The Court Tree came out. I think Motion City are ultimately very underrated as well as misunderstood, and I think that their mid-2000s pop-punk sound and influence was all but a happy accident. Commit This to Memory is, in my opinion, one of the catchiest pop rock albums ever, <laughs> and I Am The Movie is full of raw energy and has a unique style, and they both deserve their spots as classic albums, and Motion City Soundtrack definitely made their mark. They truly captured magic in a bottle on these first two albums, and I'm glad that Motion City did what they did when they did it. They were a breath of fresh air in the emo and pop punk scene at the time, and I still don't think that they get the recognition that they deserve. However, I know many people love them and have been touched by their music, so maybe I'm wrong on that one. The third Motion City soundtrack record, Even If It Kills Me, was easily the cleanest sounding, poppiest, and most sugary album they ever made, and it received mixed reactions at the time, despite containing some of the best songs of their entire catalog, such as Last Night or Antonia. Their fourth album, My Dinosaur Life, was considered somewhat of a return to form. 
where they went back to the gritty rock and roll and spastic indie rock energy of I Am The Movie, yet still progressing their sound to new places. Her Words, Destroy My Planet is probably their best song since everything is alright, if you ask me, and I consider this my third favorite Motion City record right behind the first two. Their fifth record, Go, found them experimenting with different sounds and is probably their softest and most indie rock album they have ever made. It's a nice album to listen to, uh, but very few of the songs seem to stick with me like other Emotion City songs, and although it's not a bad album in the slightest, I rarely find myself coming back to this one. Their last album, Panic Stations, is a perfect last album for the band, and focuses on all the strengths of their albums before it. It's a Pleasure to Meet You is one of their best songs ever in my opinion, as well as several other great songs on the album. It's really a great listen. If you haven't heard this one, I highly recommend going to check it out. It's great. Uh, it seems like the band was starting to lose steam, however, once this album came out, and it's a shame that it did, because it's a great sounding album, and has some truly stellar songs on it. And that about wraps up this video. Um, I really just wanted to get into kind of the first two Motion City records and the place that they held in the emo and pop punk world. Because like I said, that's kind of the point of this. They were in the emo and pop punk world. However, I don't think they intended to, um, as they were not inspired by this kind of genre, except for bands like, you know, the Get Up Kids and, 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 and Jawbox and things like that. But at that point, it's like, what even is emo and what isn't? What is pop punk and what isn't? Is it alternative rock? Is it, is it pop rock? Is it power pop? Were, were Weezer a pop punk band or were they an alternative rock band? Were Motion City Soundtrack a pop punk band or were they an alternative rock band? They're definitely classified as a pop punk band, but it's interesting because that's not what they intended to set out to do, but that's what everyone says about them. Um, and in that way, I think they're misunderstood, and in that way, I think they're underrated for for what they really were as a band, which was which was a, a an interesting blend of um, some great 90s music that just happened to end up sounding like Fall Out Boy, who just happened to become huge the same year that the Motion City soundtrack released Commit This to Memory. So it's kind of cool how things worked out for them and cool their spot in time. You know, I often think about if, if they had released I Am The Movie and Commit This To Memory in like 93 and 95 respectively, like how that would be different or how those records would be different. Um, Cause obviously that's the era that they were inspired by and the sound that they were going for. Either way, I already have rambled on about this enough. Motion City Soundtrack are a great band, one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, underrated, misunderstood. I saw their last uh, Boston show on their last tour at the Paradise. Um, it was sold out. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Justin Pierre's new solo record is great, In the Drink. I highly recommend it if you haven't heard it. Um, definitely kind of uh, like an extension of Motion City Soundtrack, but he's exploring a lot of new sounds and styles too. Either way, um, this has been the video for today. I got a lot of new videos coming up um, that if you weren't interested in this one, I think you'll definitely be interested in the ones coming up. So stay tuned. Uh, I hope you have a great day, great night, whatever. And with that, it's been your boy Julian. Thank you. I love you. Peace out.